Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode and this is the very first episode of the Classic Plus show. This is just a show that's discussing and theorycrafting on the upcoming game mode Classic Plus since we recently got a very soft confirmation that Classic Plus is real or at least something after Season of Discovery. But we're just going to go with Classic Plus for simplicity's sake. My name is Ebonheart, I'm your host and this is my co-host, Hello Jay Tallow. Much love, brother. So we're just going to like jump right into it and start the very first question we have. Since Classic Plus was soft confirmed by Blizzard interviews by myself and Hammer Dance and a few other creators, what does that mean? What exactly is Classic Plus to the average player, the average World of Warcraft consumer? So I'm going to let you start with here, Tello. What is your opinion? What is your thought on Classic Plus? You know, I think honestly, when I when I think of Classic Plus, I think of a journey of something fresh, something new but also something we are well aware of as World of Warcraft players. I think it's, you know, feeding off of the very fond and beautiful memories that we had growing up with the gem of this game that we all call WoW. And, you know, going through each expansion that we did, but also remembering the classic journey originally that we had and remembering the good and both the bad moments of it. Um, but I do think Classic Plus is something that is supposed to broaden our horizons with endless possibilities of many, you know, new journeys, new quests, you know, maybe possible zones that we are, you know, not finished, you know, assets being used for classes that are finally finishing the, the fulfillment of the class fantasies themselves and actually seeing that, you know, on the screen rather than, you know, no longer is it a, a discussion of it being, oh, a possibility, but it actually is there now. It's no longer a possibility. It is 100% set in stone. So I think that's what Classic Plus is to me, just getting everything finally finalized and this new journey is something that we're all excited to you know, hop aboard on, pretty much. Absolutely. Like, I'm right there with you. For me, Classic Plus, the idea, at least for me, has always been Classic 2019, where most people, sure, there was the private server players who knew everything, but most people coming back for the first time essentially knew nothing about Classic. They went in, yeah. they experienced things, the journey was like exciting and fun for people. Those memories started coming back like, I remember doing this, or Molten Core was this, or this was fun, this grind. And then sure, eventually it became fully data mind. everybody knows everything, everybody's playing the same meta. But for Classic, for me, Classic Plus is that story, that like lifestyle, exactly like you said, of taking that feeling, that experience, and then expanding upon it. So like yeah. new zones, finishing the classes because, you know, Rep Paladin, as you know <laughs> greatly, was not fun mm -hmm. in regular classic. So just taking and finishing yeah. those classes and letting everybody be able to play the game the way they want to play, but in that vanilla classic ecosystem. And I, I don't know exactly what they plan on doing personally, but for me, it's like going to Hygel, Grimbatol, all those OG places, experiences, and just letting us all be like, so we know we know retail the modern canon is this but we're going to mm -hmm. discuss and finish that OG canon what Chris Metzen wrote 22 years ago 20 no 24 yeah. 25 years ago and just experiencing those stories and those arcs that aren't like going to outland or northrend and that that's yeah. for me what it is and like you said exactly it's um it's a whole experience that should be just a continuation a classic letting everybody live that through and through yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, having the feeling of players, you know, continuing something for, you know, classic World of Warcraft is what a lot of people want to, you know, experience and want to enjoy. They want to see what, you know, Blizzard is potentially, you know, cooking with. They, they want to see what type of, you know, things that we never had access to finally be revealed within Classic Plus and actually get utilized. I mean, you can even see it right now with Season of Discovery, but of a lot of the things that they're doing, like testing each things in each phase, seeing the responses that they're getting and seeing the outcomes of those responses, whether they're good or bad, right? Um, but these are the kind of things I think as a World of War, uh, Warcraft player, I quite enjoy because I think the biggest key thing to do 
within, you know, wow, is take the risks, take the, you know, the opportunity to see what works and what fails. And I think season of discovery is doing a good job for that. It's the test ground. It's the playground of, you know, experimentation, so to say, before classic plus actually happens. And then obviously, like you were saying with Metzen and, you know, the, the, we'll call them the old files, if anything, <laughs> you know, the, the, the Mets and old files, the encrypted right. folder to finally be opened and say, you know what, there's a lot of good ideas on paper here. Let's get our dev team. And, you know, depending, you know, on how how much funding goes into classic pus um and also with um you know having either a bigger team or not and actually expand on these avenues of possibilities that were you know talked about many many years ago until you know we get to classic plus 100 percent right there with you. I, I love the 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 old classic files the old medicine files <laughs> the I, old like, medicine files yeah, I, I like that <laughs> yeah. a lot. uh because yeah. actually they still exist uh this was something i found when i was doing research for one of my videos was that when Metzen would write a storyline, he would write something, and then he didn't actually like going back to check his notes, so he would just write new stuff. What he could remember, yeah. and then expand upon it again, and then again. So there's these just mm -hmm. books upon books of old maps, drawings, notes, that Chris Metzen wrote and just put away because I wrote something new and better, I want to go with this now. So those still exist at Blizzard, or at his own home office, I'm not sure where he kept them. So getting, being able to open those and be like, we should have done this instead of the new stuff, Metzen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like looking at the old drafts. I, I think, honestly, one of my favorite parts of, like, even in uh, just gaming, I would say, as a whole, is always seeing, like, the concept art and, like, the concept ideas and um, visual concepts of, like, what could have been and what could have happened. And this exactly happens, you know, not only with, like, story design, sound design, a game design, game philosophy, you know, discussion within a dev room before you're, like, making, you know, games. But this happens, you know, especially with, like, class design. Design, you know and i think that's the one thing for players uh i do think there was a big portion of players that care about azeroth care about the world you know what to do within azeroth but most importantly at the end of the day people care about how the game feels uh, more than anything it's one of the most important things within the game anytime you pick up any game within an hour you need to know if this game feels good if you're mm -hmm. playing it and whatever you're playing feels good and that's something that i'm looking forward to classic plus is seeing how they experiment with you know either the older ideas that they have or newer ideas and make the fantasy of classes feel like wow i am playing this class and it's fulfilling the fantasy that i've always you know wanted it to feel and it feels good like you know the rotation the abilities everything no 100 percent class like that class philosophy and design is incredibly important because like you said, like when you go into a game, everyone has that class that clicks with them, even if it's not good. Like I knew plenty of Rhett players who, knowing their class was ass, still played Rhett because it resonated with them. Same thing with Boomkins yeah. or Feral Druids or Shadow Priest. A lot of people played a suboptimal class because that's the class that vibed with them, that made them feel like this is my journey, this is my story. And sure, a lot of people, like you said, gameplay is paramount, will play something that's less fun because it's the meta way yeah. to play, the most efficient way, for example, every warrior and druid or like holy paladin. Exactly. So I, I, I do think that with classic plus, absolutely, that class balance, that just being able to actually have that class fantasy and have it actually work this time is absolutely more mm. important than, and it's, it sucks to say, cause I'm a big lore nerd. Like I love the world, the story, the characters, but yeah. most people just genuinely don't give a shit. And that like, it's, it, it feels sad to say, but like most people just when they're even playing the war within which just came out will skip the story just to get to the end game and just start doing yeah. dungeons and grinding and getting the characters ready so yeah with classic plus as much as it does suck to say i do think making sure that gameplay works is more important than the story being good yeah i i agree i because i you know at the end of the day you know you have to realize too um times have changed and and that's a big underline right there for a lot of people um for some gamers in other genres that are not as crazy as the fan base here that we have at world of warcraft which let's admit we're all crazy including us you know i don't yeah. think one person is saying here in a wow community but sure. at the end of the day much love to them you know uh but as jokes aside though uh i feel like you know to the stay on the point of it is that you know times have changed and players you know they do like the story they like the concept of it if it's actually you know cool and they see the cutscenes and be like wow you know this is actually pretty badass you know i like you know this character and the reasoning behind this character's motives but you know a lot of people especially um and you know wow there's that big you know concept of like just getting to the meta you know mm -hmm. and really just you know rushing and people feel like they they have this big fear of missing out if they're not getting to it fast enough and i feel like hopefully with classic plus 
it does answer, you know, and try to give those players that feeling that you can get to the meta, of course, if you want to, but also give the option to other players, you know, obviously saying like, listen, like take your time, enjoy these new zones, enjoy these new quests, enjoy these new dungeons and dungeon ideas that we might have that might have war within your particular class with a specific dungeon that we gave a little bit of love to. Um, and I really hope that those players actually recognize that like, oh, wow, like, you know, this was a pretty cool quest line. I remember even in Saad, you know, um, many classes, we have like different runes that we go after, mm -hmm. right, in different areas of the world. And even as like, you know, a Paladin player, I enjoyed, you know, how they were talking about, you know, um, certain things with like Arthas, you know, and the Lich King for certain classes. And then and they were talking about some TBC stuff. And, you know, and I was like reading the text and I was like, oh, wow, this is actually kind of cool. You know, when you do it, even though like it's, you know, it's obviously just to get the rune and get yeah. out of there. I get that mentality. A lot of people are like, yeah, but I just care about getting the rune and dip. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, you know, it's actually cool to see, you know, those little touches. And I hope kind of more of that is involved within Classic Plus so we actually get some cool class quests. It's something I'm particularly looking forward to in the future. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Like like I said, for me, I'm a huge lore person. Like I would, I guess I'm in the minority here, but like I would rather have a slightly shittier game to have an amazing story. I know that's not everybody. Mm. People prefer the gameplay over the story. But like the world of Warcraft, like that world in quotation marks is more important to me than the Warcraft. Like, like you yeah. said, like when you read the class runes, like for example, uh, the rune in Arathi where you have to go around with Eldiana, Il I think is her name, with the Night Elf Separatist movement where they don't actually yeah. want to, the Night Elf joining the Alliance, they want to be separate. Like there's so many story arcs that were just essentially cut from the game or abandoned from OG Vanilla that they brought back a tiny bit as like a glimpse like, the Night Elves do have Separatist movement. They don't actually lack the Alliance. They're just there because, well, in law reasons, when they first had the Night Elves, the Alliance needed a faction on Kalimdor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, having those little elements, like you said, like those the story runes, like, when you go get your rune, you see the story, you're like, oh, that's actually interesting. Cool, let me get my rune and dip. But, like, you're thinking, that was, that was a nice little story. So having more of that, and, like, for example, Demon Paul Canyon, the priest quest, the priest, the priest runes, those little things oh, do yeah. have so much yeah. value. And I know... Most of the player base just does not care. But I feel like they should still acknowledge that part of the player base and be like, I know you guys like lore, so this is going to be a small tidbit in this dungeon and some quest lines if you actually read quests. And like, yeah. sure, the dungeon is fun, the loot is cool, but for those of you that like the story, here's some extra like lore and stuff for you to like deep dive into and like enjoy. No, yeah, of course. Like at the end of the day, and also I think, you know, uh, we have to realize as players, you know, as the devs are the ones, you know, working on this game. Mm -hmm. And I think they have the privilege and opportunity to inject whatever they want to in the game. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's obviously something that they're working on. This is their, you know, passion project. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's every bit of fair to allow the devs, you know, to play around, add some funny things, you know, joke upon some maybe, mm -hmm. you know, things as well. I think that's how you get in touch with your community is like, you know, joking upon the things that, you know, didn't work out maybe mm -hmm. inside and, you know, make fun and laugh about it. You know, even like the whole thing, when you know, with the, uh, you know, I mean, you're aware of it too, like the interviews, you know, discussing yeah. the meatball, so to say, in more yeah. you know, and just like laughing and joking upon these things and making light of it and realizing that, eh, you know, maybe it wasn't the best, you know, but like, obviously, Obviously, we can, you know, add our own touches when, like, you mm -hmm. know, you go to, like, your own class uh, quest zone or if you're doing, like, a new dungeon and then maybe you'll see something you were familiar with that was, like, probably in Sod. It's no longer in Classic Plus, but you might laugh about it when you see it. It's, like, stuff like that. It's, like, mm -hmm. you know, staying connected with the community, but also building upon something for the future of Classic Plus, you know, and um, I I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to it, man. I, I truthfully am, and I think a lot of players are. They're just holding off right now and, you know, and mm -hmm. finishing off Sod at the moment. No, absolutely. Like, I'm 100 percent that the devs taking light of their mistakes is is crucial. Like admitting that they made a mistake and being like, yep, "We tried. It, it didn't stick." You know, the yeah. the dart on the board. This one missed quite a bit. But like, yeah. I do love that experimentation and trying out new things because it does let us find new things. Like I know not many, not every single person likes, for example, all the rune and class changes. But for a lot yeah. of people, sod is the best version of classic, just in terms of how it feels and plays. Sure, some of the content might be a miss, but that class direction for certain classes makes those classes feel so much better. Sure, some classes are too overtuned like Hunters, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they smack. <laughs> um, for sure. So it's like, I, I do agree with that experimentation. And then like when they make a mistake, just acknowledging and being like, the meatball, not the, not the best design decision we've made. But hey, we learn from it. The next boss won't be a meatball. It'll be something better if they do do a new boss, for example. So I, I, do, I do agree with your points there. Um, that exactly. experimentation, because Sod, 
And I know not everybody agrees with that, but I've always said that SOD is an experiment. And the devs even said that in the interview, like, what do you think is hap- what do you think SOD is for? So those mm. experiments leading to classic plus and everyone's excitement, like you said, everyone is very excited. Some people are, are doomerish, and I get that. I, I respect people being like hesitant, but I'm just like just like you, I'm beyond excited. I cannot wait for it. Like no matter what they do, it's going to be an enjoyable experience. Even if some things don't land right, start classic plus is still going to be amazing at a bare minimum. And sure, copium, hopium, whatever you want to call it, but I am, I'm absolutely excited. I don't think the devs can ruin Classic Plus. They might make mistakes, but they, they can't make a bad game. You know, it's a good thing that you mentioned that about, like, you know, um, the devs not, like, ruining, you know, a, a game in its, like, entirety. Because, like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, um, I think as a, as a WoW player base, you know, uh, a lot of people always feel like, you know, a certain phase or a certain por- a portion of, like, you know, the expansion is, like, you know, not good or maybe mm-hmm. not worth playing. But, like, at the end of the day, a lot of players still play, mm-hmm. you know. And as much as, like, they say, you know, it's, you know, not good or it's not worth it and it's not in- as good as this expansion, yada, yada. Um, you still have people still logging on every day. People are still subscribed. They're going through it. They enjoy pieces and bits of it. And no matter what, even if like, you know, there was an issue in Classic Plus or whatever happens down the line, I still think, you know, the dev team would work on that and, you know, get the feedback here, you know, the players out and obviously continue to, you know, be transparent about their decisions and, you know, changes that they would have to make. But I think, you know, the, the main thing about SOD right now is that they're already doing that, you know, and SOD is the test ground. SOD is the playground. This is what they're working with to get get the ideas and the concepts prepared months or a year or so down the line when classic plus does become an actual thing. And when that gets announced, you already know people are going to flip out. People are Absolutely. like, it's going to like the hype you saw at BlizzCon with sod, mm-hmm. the hype you saw with classic era in 2019, you know, and, and so on and so forth in the past. Um, it's going to happen again. And, and it's going to be it's insane. The amount of things that I think they will potentially put out to the fan base when they finally see that on the big screen, maybe at BlizzCon, you know, maybe I think that would be uh, a huge home run for them for sure. A hundred, like, I know I say a hundred percent a lot, but like it's the hype for classic plus is already pretty insane. And my audience, I, I don't have the biggest audience, but I did a poll recently, thousand something votes were on it. And the options were classic plus classic, fresh TBC and out of the, those options, it was quite literally 79% so, uh, Classic Plus. And mm. so people do want press, they do want those gamers, but Classic Plus is such a huge phenomenon. And like, sure, when they do announce it, they're probably going to miss some people's idea of what Classic Plus is. But just Classic Plus itself being real, and whether it's called Classic Plus or not, it's a whole different, idea, uh, whole different thing. But Classic Plus is probably going to be one of the most hyped products on the planet. It's essentially akin to a WoW 2 or a WoW reboot is, is what it is. And so yeah. everybody is like just hearing that. That's going to bring a lot of people back. Like when Classic 2019 happened, I think WoW went from like 3 million subs to like 7 million in the span of a year. And then it's yeah. or 8.2 and then it started dropping with TBC and Wrath and like what, what not. So of course, I, yeah. I do see like Classic Plus bringing back even more people than Classic 2019. Again, oh, yeah. I could be wrong, but like just the way I've seen people talk about it, the amount of people that have like quit after Classic being like, I don't care about a fresh or a this, but Classic Plus, I'd come back. Again, my, the people I'm surrounded with is different than what everyone else is surrounded with, but the, the hype seems genuine that people are more than any other version of WoW excited for Classic Plus. Oh, yeah, I, I I agree, because, you know, the thing is, is that if they give enough backing and enough support with other, you know, um, I guess, external elements of, you know, promotion, um, following, you know, continuous discussion, you know, on social media, uh, depending on, you know, how they decide to promote the product, I think Classic Plus is something that can definitely be very massive we can see that 2019 feel we can see that sod feel um and you know we're gonna get that eventually that same feeling once again anytime there's like a big launch no matter what it's always an overabundance of players this happens and then you know the draw the drop off definitely does happen at a certain point if the content is not continuing 
or continuously giving that same feeling as the launch did. You know, it's it's a difference between like you know the launch period, the the honeymoon soda phase, so to say, and then obviously the fall off to see if that honeymoon keeps going and it's a great trip, or you know it was fun while it lasted, and then we kind of move on and still play from time to time. So I think you know um, overall it is completely up to the marketing department um, to really you know also give out the hype for this. And, you know, obviously, you know, the player base as yourself, you know, continuously talking about, you know, Classic Plus, you know, bringing it up and other content creators aside um, and having these discussions with the community. And then obviously, you know, the devs being involved where we can get to what Classic Plus is actually going to look like. What are we going to get within it and how much exploration content is actually going to be where it's people still feel the, you know, the vanilla feel, but they see that this is not only vanilla, but it's vanilla extended, you know, and they're looking forward to that. You know, hundred percent, like talking exactly about that point about the, the, the vanilla and then into that classic plus, what will it initially look like classic plus in your opinion? Cause that's a really good segue into the next point we actually had is that will it essentially just be a classic fresh until Nax and then the new content happens? Or, or will they start off with some class tunings, not as much brand new content and just be like, so Pal Red Paladin works now, Boom can work, Shadow Priest works, lower the damage back to what it was in OG mm -hmm. or Classic 2019, and just let mm -hmm. people kind of play and slowly build up to the, after Nax, look at all the things coming. Tarzan Crypt is just the first project we have. Like, what do you think Classic Plus would actually even look like? Because announcing it is one thing, but how does that open up to the player base? Like that initial classic content, how do they play around with that in your opinion? I think it all starts with the starting zones, to be honest. Like, the minute you log on to the game and you become, you know, the character you're trying to play, like, the first initial picking of a class, you know? And the minute you get into the zone you start off as and you remember the, fam you know, the familiarities with, like, you know, uh, vanilla leveling, OG leveling, whether you were via Alliance or via Horde, and then you see small little differences start to happen. Maybe, you know, changes with certain enemy, you know, um, uh, abilities, you know, mm -hmm. or possible enemy reworks of how they visually look, you know, where they still look the same, but maybe small little different things in colorization, um, possible, you know, different dialogue options, and also, you know, different quests within these little zones that maybe you weren't used to before, but they're related to your class specifically because, um, you know, it's like a homage to like you choosing this class, you know, and they want to really focus on your, you know, your rogue or your paladin, your warrior or your caster class whatever class you are you know feeling that you are a part of the zone feeling that there's some type of approachability that you know i am in involved in elwyn i'm involved in the barons you know my class is making an impact in this area or zone and then it's about like adding you know different things of like what kind of new quests are within here what kind of like slash event is going on within these starting zones that feel very different from vanilla but it's still vanilla like you're still you, you're very familiar with this place and it's no longer where it's like um it's copying anything of like you know a previous or a new expansion but it's its own original idea and it's something that the player base is getting used to and getting accommodated with. And then, you know, we finally virtue, you know, we venture off into higher level zones. And maybe some of these higher level zones have different enemies that are, you know, changed as well. And I think, I think honestly, one of the biggest things that I was looking forward to and in, in a comparison with Season of Discovery is when I remember they were showing screenshots of like the the wolves, I, I believe, or like those like Likings and like Duskwood. Mm -hmm. And, like, I remember, like, seeing screenshots, and I was like, oh, I think we're going to get, like, you know, possibly new enemies within Duskwood. And, like, n new creatures we've mm -hmm. never, you know, fought before with new abilities and something to watch out for. Like, a small little mechanic, nothing crazy, but obviously we could stop it with our class. And then we didn't really get anything massively new with D Duskwood besides the incursion in Duskwood, which I, I don't right. consider <laughs> incursions. Like, well, I don't, yeah. I, let's, we, we could cut that, <laughs> but, but, and, but in other news for it, um, I do think it would just be interesting, like long story short, like without ranting is that I would like to see that each new zone, as you level up, there's something new within that zone quest wise, enemy design wise, um, you know, possibly something that just comes out of nowhere and you, you weren't expecting it. So I would like to see a lot of surprises that happens in each new zone and also stuff that is catered towards your class in you know, being specific about it. So that's something that I think is, I would like to see, um, you know, happen from the starting ground up rather than just everything happening 
at the end of Nax. Because if everything is just at the end of Nax, you're telling the player base that you were just getting vanilla. You're you're yeah. you're 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 just saying that okay, we're just getting where it's it's not really classic plus. It's it's just everything at the end of it. We have to wait until everything is done, and you're giving us the base game again. Players have already played that several mm-hmm. times before, which we don't mind. We'll do, you know, for sure. <laughs> But we will do as much as crazy yeah. as that sounds. But it's like, it's just, we will. We love WoW, right? Mm-hmm. But I really want to see new things happen with the enhancement of dungeons and actual zones where it feels like that I can always come back to Duskwood. I can always come back to Red Ridge. I can always come back to Desolus. I can come back to Stone Talon Mountains. You know what I mean? For something um, that is new and refreshing. I hunt that, that is exactly what I personally would have wanted. So I do love that you went straight to that direction because in my opinion I, they should put a lot of their energy and effort into like new zones new end game raids and dungeons but i 100 percent think they should put some effort into that whole leveling experience and vibe so for example dustwood that's a good zone there's essentially no quest with stitches he's just he patrols and just mercs you if you walk by adding a couple yeah. quests or flavor to stitches for example like because stitches is higher level than he's level 30 four or five i think right he's yeah he's around that level cap yeah and so even when you hit level 30 which is when dusk would ends there's still nothing tying to it but like imagine getting level 35 or 36 and getting a quest to go back and it's like it's yeah. time to put stitches down like adding that extra yeah. flavor extra content to an existing zone and like you said with the worgen adding a couple of extra you know a new rare a new quest line saying some worgen activity has spiked but one of these now yeah. intelligent or something see what's happening just those tiny little bits of flavor that take a bit of time but let the devs make people feel like holy shit that wasn't there i've played classic 75 times what is this war <laughs> yeah true, so true, true. having those little things absolutely is that classic plus vibe and feeling um and like letting people like for example paladin quest or like as a shaman having some more quest talking about the elements and like you know or for example the night owls when you're going through a jara for example, though, mm-hmm. talking about like, of orcs is a better example. Ramash and what happened here, like the that yeah. entire area where Demonfall Canyon is. There's essentially no quest there for the most part. I mean, there is a few, but like, not really. So having the orcs have to mm-hmm. go down there and be like, pay homage to uh, Gramash, or like you know, Ar- uh, Thrall saying, ah, my big brother, I miss him. Here's a quest. Go. Go give uh, respect to his graveside or whatever, and you have to fight through some demons. Be like, why is there so much demon corruption here? Still, I thought we defeated them. Yeah. Just you know, just extra flavor would make the whole world feel so much better. And still, let everybody go like, okay, most of the new content is post Nax, but there's enough new things that this is classic plus. I mean, heck, even if like you know your class cl- uh, quests as well within like you know these new, these zones that we're familiar with or new zones in general um even led to like personal class quest cutscenes where you know there was cutscenes like catered around your actual class quest and you're involved in the cutscene as your class you know and these cutscenes are paying homage to like you know um a very familiar foe or a good person a part of your you know specific race that you chose that you're aware of you know, and seeing these new cutscenes that we've never seen before would just add a little bit more flavor to the world of like not only you being involved in the world with your character, but to Azeroth in general, you know, overall. And I think it's like small little things like that. I think some of the, uh, you know, more of the the people that enjoy a lot of like, you know, the RP side of things or just like, you know, the lore side of things would be like, wow, this is actually really cool that where I, I feel like I'm involved in this cutscene, you know, like my character's there. Um, and you know, maybe he's not like the, he's not the hero of the story, of course, but he's just there. And like, you know, there's obviously something going on and it's something that we've never seen in vanilla before or classic. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a nice little touch that, you know, some people can appreciate, you know, from an artistic standpoint. Absolutely. I, I do like, now that they have the art themes access, I don't think we're going to get many more new things in Sod in particular. We still might get Karazhan Crips or that Scarlet Raid they tease, but I feel like most of the effort is now going into Classic Plus or whatever is the yeah. next project they're working on. So having that art team support, like it, it makes me excited, like you said, new mobs, some, maybe even some cutscenes, which is not really a classic thing, but it would be really cool. Like, for example, the Anixia attunement questline. Imagine there was a little cinematic with that now. Or just like... Yeah small little things that just add that extra flavor to that classic world 
I mean, why not? I mean, honestly, like, and it's not to say it's like, oh, we should be taking, because I know there will always be people that be like, oh, but you're basically taking those ideas from retail. Um, it's not to say that you're stealing or taking the ideas from retail, but it's trying to implement some type of like enjoyment value out of a, a, a game that's a role playing game. That's a world that's an MMO, you know, and honestly, at the end of the day, I would love to see like, you know, more, you know, little cutscenes with like certain like maybe you completed a massive quest chain. Right. And even if it's just one cutscene. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a massive quest chain that led to like some, you know, epic or legendary item that's specific only to your class. But then you see this like, you know. Um, this cutscene showing all the things that you've done on your journey from, you know, one to whatever. And then it's like, it's a fulfillment for your, you know, your character to show that you've, you've mattered in this world, you know, you've participated within this world and you're, you know, paying some type of homage to whether it's, you know, like once again, you know, a foe or, or a friend of like, you know, the Alliance or Horde um, from many of the legend, legendary characters we know, or even yourself. So I just think it's honestly a good idea and it's something refreshing, um, you know, for, you know, the future of Classic Plus. And it, it's just a small thing, you know, it's nothing massive. It's a very small thing, to be honest. No, and like talking about cinematics, so something that came to my head is like in the law, many people might not know this, but like all the classic raids, it's not a group of 20 or 40 people that go in and defeat it. It's like, Hundreds upon hundreds of adventurers, the Alliance, the Horde, like proper armies are sieging Molten Core or Blackwing Lair or AQ and Nax. It, it wasn't this like 20 champions went in and saved Azeroth. It was hundreds yeah. of polygons, hundreds of people were just like sieging these places trying to save Azeroth. So having that little like in game cinematic where it shows, you know, after you complete, for example, Molten Core or the Arn Courage Gates, for example, when you clear AQ 40. So it's like a little cinematic of hundreds upon hundreds of classic like adventurers running through on Karaj fighting like the hurricane trailers. Um, yeah, yeah, and just, exactly. And just great being trailer. like, it was a great epic moment, and your feat of feat of bravery helped us make sure we had enough manpower to do it. So just small things, but we're not the main character. But it's like, hey, you were there. You you were part of the yeah. on Karaj uh, war. So congratulations. So little things like that are definitely like it's it. I don't think they will do it. I think it would be awesome, but like, I think they have to pick and choose where they spend their resources. And I think they're just going to be of like, course. cinematics of course. out of our budget range. Here's a new <laughs> raid, though. <laughs> yeah, like, don't, don't get me wrong. Obviously, it's just discussion at the mm -hmm. end of the day. It's obvious, like, you know, these are like hopes, right? And, mm -hmm. like, you know, and as everyone say, like, hopium or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's just little things that I'm like, all right, you know, it would be cool. You know, obviously, people want to skip the cutscene. They can skip yeah. it just like with Absolutely. anything else. I know people don't care about it, but it would just be like a nice little touch um, whether, you know, they decide to add other things like, you know, maybe maybe even like achievements if they really wanted to, which I know for some people, um, they either like achievements or they don't like achievements, but it's a, it's a topic at hand and it's something that I would like to see, you know, maybe even in a poll discussion or if people are actually interested in stuff like that. And, and I don't think it really affects anything. It has nothing to do to harm any, you know, the community with both raiders or pvpers or pveers it it doesn't mm -hmm. it do, do, does nothing it but just anything add more value to classic plus of anything no. in a small way yeah that, that actually like that was a really perfect segue i didn't even have to do it myself ui changes for example that was one of the points we have on the list right here mm. the achievement system like in your opinion like with the classic play bits we saw with the classic era um uh the the, the forgetting the word here that where people got upset and frustrated with the guild UI changes, might of storm yeah. and things like that. What mm -hmm. do you think the player base would actually be okay with? Because it's mostly going to be classic era players, maybe some retail players, maybe people that quit years ago coming back for classic plus. But what yeah. kind of UI change do you think they'd be okay with? Like if you came back and there was an achievement system, or the guild UI system was expanded, like at what level of UI changes or just new windows do you think is too much? For the classic player base because like you said the achievement system in my personal opinion i think they should because i'm a completionist so having that thing of these are just classic only achievements they're not based off retails ones so going and yeah. like clearing all of mc doing every dungeon collecting all this stuff getting all these reputations maxed out having achievement points for it i would be like one of the first people to get a hundred percent of every single achievement but like in yeah. your opinion what do you think is good for the classic player base and they'd be okay with and what do you think would be like a hard let's never do this i think um for the classic community um a lot of people they don't want to have the feeling where the game is now being a carbon copy of just retail if they wanted to play retail they would just play retail 
you know, and they know that there's many changes over there that, you know, make the game uh, for the most part, uh, truth be told, better. I'm not going to lie. Like there is a lot of good elements about Retail WoW that is just fledged out and it's it's to smoothen out the experience. Um, but there is a lot of like old classic players that are on their high horse about being too proud of like, you know, no changes, brother. All right. I don't want nothing new to my vanilla. And I respect that, you know, and I get that 100 um, percent. But I do think like stuff like, you know, the the new thing inside, like I will say, like as a person who experienced it like yourself, when I opened up that new guild like thing for the first time, I was like, wait, this is literally the retail thing. Um, I was a little confused. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I was like, I don't, I didn't know if I liked it right away. I, I kind of hated it to be honest with you. For like week one, I was like, this is really not it. Well, I'll just leave the system that we had in place. But then I experimented with it a little bit more, and also playing retail because I have been playing the War Within the past couple of days for the early access, and also coming back to Sod and trying it out. It's not that big of a deal. It really isn't that hard to. It's it just like it, it was just something like obviously implemented from retail, which they just put it into sod now if they were to put that into classic plus i don't think it's a it's something once again if it's not game breaking and it's mm -hmm. not causing a massive disturbance to the point where it's like oh this is a headache to manage the ui this is causing severe problems with you know contacting my my guildies or stuff of that nature then i don't think it's a it's a something that's a bad ordeal that is a negative impact for the game i just think you know players as much as we don't like to admit it sometimes we refuse to accept anything that is you know a little bit different from original vanilla you know so i do think like stuff like that i mean at the end of the day i will say this i think them shoving that into the er classic era servers without any acknowledgement or talking about it first was wrong i will say that and i'm going to defend the classic error players a hundred percent on that part where like maybe they didn't want might of stormwind maybe they didn't want druids using pole arms maybe they didn't you know maybe they didn't want the you know the 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 guild ui mm -hmm. so i get that if they just want to leave it at that to each his own you should be allowed to have your original og og vanilla servers your pro you know your private servers or whatever you do to each his own take that but i do think for the future of classic plus um we have to test and experiment these things. I think it all comes down to communication of them showing screenshots of what the UI would look like. Once again, having further discussion, you know, via social media, especially on their, you know, their main Blizzard website, saying, what do you guys feel about this? Do you like this snippet of it? It's just a tease, but please let us know in the comments below. We'll get a mass majority vote from this and then we'll go forward with it. And then keep having these discussion, you know, each week on how the ui is going to be you know set for you know the classic plus players and then come to a some type of agreement because you're not going to please everybody even if mm -hmm. the ui is perfect somebody's going to hate it no matter what it, there's always people that are going to try to down you on something that is nearly good or nearly perfect or not that great it doesn't matter it, everything is always going to have hate just the way the classic community works um but i think honestly um seeing some interesting changes even like with potentially uh guild banks I know that's something mm -hmm. me and you uh, were fond about, you know, when it comes to a guild bank, I would love to see guild banks. And if they have achievements, I know as an old school player from the console generation, I loved getting achievements. I loved, you know, I think achievements for me was like one of the funnest part about games where like you unlocked achievement and you're an achievement uh, completionist, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think honestly, um, I would be okay if they were going with a couple of things of that nature for sure. Yeah. Like that would like, I would want to touch up on the classic era plates. I do agree that the dev should have said something. Maybe they should have opened a vote in game, like a GM ticket in the corner, being like, "Hey guys, click yes if you want Mighty Stormwind. Click yes if you want Guild U uh, Guild UI updated. Click yes if we want to give Druids Polon." So people got to vote yes or no in game on the character one per account, because I know a lot of classic era players actually wanted Mighty Stormwind, but they all hated yeah. Paul arms on Druids and. The guild ui so giving those players that option like just shoving it in and being like here you go was a terrible decision so i agree with you on that front um but like and it, then moving on to classic plus like as much as the classic era players deserve to have their own game mode being a classic puritan being like no changes is definitely detrimental to the future of classic so for classic I agree plus 100 percent, 100 percent. so for classic plus for example like, like you said the guild banks you just touched up on that there I think it should have a guild bank because pretty much every single guild I know has like two or three raid teams and each person has to have like a, uh, each raid team has a raid team's leader as a bank pot with all the guild raid math and all the resources and all the things for their own guild, for their own team. 
and then there's already guild backs in game. It's just literally somebody's alt. It's a pain in the ass. It's a hassle. And I, I yeah. know people are gonna say part of classic is the masochism and the frustration. That's what makes classic classic. Is that suffering? <laughs> yeah, um, that is true. That is true. But for classic plus, I feel like they can tone down the suffering just a tiny bit because this is this isn't retail, but it's not vanilla. It's not classic. It's classic plus. So taking a few quality of life changes, I don't. I don't want it to be fully like retail, and I've been playing the War Within's early access as well. In fact, I don't know if you can see it there. Wait, let me move my chair back a second. But that's the other side right there. I have the War Within's Collector's Edition. I oh, literally, it's badass. It, it, it looks sick. I, I, I went and bought it. And despite like uh, me playing and enjoying the War Within, it's not my favorite version of the game, but the War Within is actually amazing. And some of those quality of life changes are definitely something that Classic Plus should have. Guild you are. Uh, this might be controversial, but I'm actually a big fan of the guild UI in Classic. Not in Era, but in Sod. I think it's benefit. Like I, when I log in, seeing my guildies chat, all the messages from like the previous day, so I can just catch up on any drama, any like questions, anything that people ask and chat. I actually like that as a GM or an officer or whatnot. Um, yeah. But then like the guild bank being added and just new quality of life changes aren't a bad thing. It shouldn't be like retail where everything is a breeze. There's no struggle. There's no effort. I feel like classic should still have that level of struggle. Um, but it's classic plus. It's neither retail nor classic. It's something it's it's I don't know the right way to describe it would be, but it's. Yeah, I don't have a good I don't have a good definition of exactly what classic plus should be in terms of quality of life changes and positives like. Yeah. What do you think is too much and what do you think is too, like, not enough? Like, where do you, what, would, what UI element would you draw the line at for Classic Plus? Like, what do you think if they did this, it's no longer Classic Plus, it's beginning to be retail? I think if, like, maybe if they added, like, because I know in, like, uh, War Within right now, there's, like, a war band system now. Right. Where, like, it's, like, a, it's a bank thing where you can transfer all your items that, like, are, let's say, like, if for example, for any reason, I know sometimes, like, uh, in vanilla, like when you're leveling, you get items that you don't want. So mm -hmm. you'll just sell them or you just maybe hit up a guildie for a disenchantment. Right. So within like the war within, you could just like deposit all these items into like your war band. And then you just log onto your other character and just like, just take them just to give them to your other character. Yeah. So now it's like no longer these items are like soul bound or whatever, or, you know, you disenchant them or communicate with another person. I think people might not like that because it takes away from the aspect of communication and like, especially talking to people within the game, trying to form new friends, you know, maybe you meet a person who's like an enchanter and he can disenchant for you. And now you became good friends with that person. Now you're playing with that, you know, that individual every day. And it's because you, you were communicative, you know, and you're, you're playing an MMO, you're experiencing an online game where you socialize with other people. So I think, one of the things that vanilla players don't want to see, which I think is their main reason what they're afraid of is removing the, the socialization between, you know, talking with one another and actually having the retail aspect where it automates all of that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's a big automation, like, you know, like the LFG, right? Like, you know, or, or LFR looking for raid, you know, stuff like that. I don't think this should be in classic plus like, 100%. you know, um, the L the LFR, that whole system chalk that let's throw that in the garbage. <laughs> maybe, you know, send that to a disposer somewhere mm -hmm. when it comes to classic plus for retail. I understand, but people don't want that. The biggest thing is they don't want to see the social aspect from retail, how it is over there and classic plus to have this like cross crossing of each other where like now they feel like now classic plus is not as you know tight knitted you met the same mm -hmm. person that you met in one zone as you did in an uh you know maybe you met him on a monday and then you come back friday he's still there you know mm -hmm. and you, you you meet that person and it's like oh snuff you know or or wow that this is crazy you know this is what classics like you know you're meeting people or this dude ganked you you remember him in all track mountains but now i saw him over here in desolus or something it's like oh i remember this person and that's how tight knitted it is when it comes to classic so i, I think people want that you know that uh social feel which i do think in retail um it doesn't have as much because like you know things are so fast paced things are so quick you know especially you know with like dragon riding you know you you gank someone real fast and you fly off into 18 different continents you're gone yeah. <laughs> like that's it you'll never you'll never see that guy again like Gangs it just is what it is in winter spring now 
he's 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 jetpack brother yeah. he's he's out of there but like i do think overall um yeah I, I think you know keeping some ui change like i agree with you the guild thing i actually love it now i i genuinely think it's good i think also like you get to see like who got different epic drops on the mm -hmm. tab and like who got rewarding items it's like dude our, our guild's achieving some badass things right now we do, just had a dude who you know uh got spinal reaper or somebody just got perdition blade you know or somebody just got like you know uh their tier set and it shows you that in the guild i think that's cool i like the accomplishment system mm -hmm. as well as i don't mind if they were to add an achievement system as long as it's like you know classic plus is something that is a continuation and keeps going mm -hmm. rather than just be like a a regular server that just eventually will shut down which you know not shut down but like move on to an era you right. know what i mean no. um so i don't like know that. I that was a perfect like explanation. I hundred percent agree with that in the sense that um, when retail is with all the quality of life, but it's essentially a, to a degree. If you're not mythic plus rating or like uh, mythic rating or mythic plusing, it's a single player game. Um, yeah, you delves all this stuff. You can do solo raids now. So just taking that communication and community out of the game doesn't take away from the war within actually being probably the best WoW expansion since Legion. But for classic plus, making sure that none of that none of that is there where ensuring that this is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. You actually have to talk to people. Damn your anxiety. Go out there and talk. So 100% yeah. like it's true. Plastic Plus should be like, you might not want to, but you need to go whisper people to form that group. You need to do this stuff or like just having that element where you need to communicate more than anything else. So, um, but we were talking about, uh, so we're going to move to the mm -hmm. next topic because we've been 45 minutes, I think, on just Classic Plus, And we have a few other <laughs> topics to cover. Yeah, we have a lot. Uh, yeah. And we haven't even touched that much on Classic Plus. We've just been at the very beginning surface level. But moving on to Classic Fresh, which was also confirmed again, just like Classic Plus was, it was a soft confirmation and that, yeah, we see people wanting it. We're working on it. It'll come eventually. What do you think is going to happen first? Classic Fresh or Classic Plus? Between these two game modes, do you think the devs will release Classic Fresh first to let people play through while they have more time to work on Classic Plus? Or do you think they're going to do Classic Plus first and then save Classic Fresh for when they want to do like another or oh, era players are starting to quit? Let's give them Classic Fresh to bring those sub numbers back up. Like, what do you think is the plan there? I, I really hope from a player perspective and also as a content creator mm -hmm. as well that Classic Plus is first. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I, I think you do too, bro. <laughs> if they do another classic fresh, it's like, all right, well, here we go. I'm, uh, it's time to be a paladin and auto swing for the next 60 levels. It's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, because that's really just the classic era experience mm -hmm. uh, for any, for those who don't know. But regardless, um, I, I do think, um, yeah, I would, I, I, but realistically, I could see what you're getting at and say, you know what? They're going to release a fresh burst, give them some time some lead way because obviously they'll have their you know uh maybe they'll have a small team on classic fresh but like a much bigger team on classic plus and then they're putting all their assets and value and all the hard work into that and then it comes down out later down the line whether what's in maybe i mean just looking at it maybe 2025 possibly mm -hmm. classic fresh comes out and then maybe we get a 2026 classic plus it, it all depends i'm not too sure but i will say i do think classic fresh um realistically might come out first before classic plus as much as i don't want that I would love Classic Plus first, and um, yeah, I would love to go from there. Yeah. Uh, like you said, as a content creator and someone that plays well, I've been playing essentially nonstop since 2019. I think I've taken... I skipped most of Wrath of the Lich King because Wrath, Wrath I remember to a degree, it wasn't like really new for me. It was because like TBC and Classic were things I didn't actually get to experience as, as a younger child. So for me, I skipped Wrath. So having to yeah. redo f a fresh all over again as a content creator now, it would just be like, oh, okay, uh, let's do this again. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to have fun. But from a content creator perspective, it's genuinely a, oh, shit. Okay. All, all right, then, guys, let's, 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 let's try. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, unless there's like anything that's like brand spanking new and classic fresh where it's like, okay, hold up. Maybe they, they took some sod ideas and decided to like give some, you know implements of that into classic fresh um i don't know but then again if it's classic fresh and then they're not going to take any side exactly they're, it, it's gonna be just bare bones vanilla what you're used to a long xp leveling process 
of, and especially if you're on a PvP zone, you're gonna get ganked mm-hmm. in a lot of areas, a lot of griefing, mm-hmm. and then everyone's gonna try to, you know, you know, repeat the cycle of things. Now, I think the, you know, the only change that might come to Classic Fresh, I'll tell you right now, that, that is, might, it, yeah, that might. But the one thing that might come back to Classic Fresh, if it's a change, if anything, is GDKPs, since they haven't been in sod at all <laughs> so yeah. gd so gdkps maybe that's the one reason people will play classic fresh is because of those so um i get a little scared whenever new servers come out because mm-hmm. i get worried about the population of them i i do understand that hype will come with it especially if you have like a big streamer or somebody playing it but i do get nervous with them because i just know that the cycle is going to repeat itself mm-hmm. you're going to have you know you know griefing you're going to have pvp imbalance you're going to have you know, the typical raid logging, PvE, the whole scenario of World of Warcraft is going to repeat itself. And and as much as I hate to say it, too, you're going to have bots. You know, bots are going to, you know, Rampart, Classic Fresh. It's it just the way things happen, you know, with, within, you know, Classic at the moment. I know Blizzard's trying to do a better job of bots 100%, but, like, you know, they will attack those Fresh Realms 100%, and it's 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 bound to happen. Um, and then GDKPs, if they come back, I know that's something that will probably be the only change, really, in a classic fresh server because we haven't had it in so long with Sod, you know? So that's probably something players will look forward to come back to. But besides that, I don't think they're going to do anything with classic fresh. It's just going to be a stall mate for classic plus. It's just a stall mate just so they can get into classic plus right away. I, I completely agree with you. As, as much as classic fresh is cool and exciting and fun, like I, like I love watching Showbex deviate the light. Where like bringing the role yeah. play, the li- the life back to Deviate Delight and all that like classic fresh experience. That stuff was all really cool. But like from the point of view of a content creator, even Sod at its kind of worst, which was phase three was pretty terrible. I'm not even gonna I get what the devs are trying, but I'm not gonna defend phase three because Yeah. That did damage. <laughs> Oh no, oh, and, and I think they were aware of that, how yeah. bad it, it hurt. But but yeah, continue for sure. Um so like as as cool as Classic Fresh is on paper, every point you made I think stands. Like it's gonna be fun. People are gonna like start in from one to sixty, then two weeks in. So within the first month we'll all be an MC, then the Blackwing Lair hype, then like a month and a half, two months in the Blackwing Lair, the raid logging begins. People start, you know, getting slowing raid logging, not logging on anymore. It's just doing their week once a week raid or twice a week raid. Then AQ yeah. happens and AQ is a big drop off for everybody because like the AQ event is here. Then playing through AQ40 is like down here. Bare, bare, oh, yeah. Bottom of the barrel. Then Nax comes back. It's all hype. And if they do like 12 month fresh, just to give Classic Plus that breathing room to get developed, you know, build Karazhan, that Scarlet Raid, you know, Grimbatol. Like, I don't know what their plan on opening things are. They have like 45 things they could even start building or working on. And sure, Karazhan Chris might be the first one, but the devs need some time to make sure they have like that, that, that content cycle prepared. So giving us 12 months of fresh, I think wouldn't be too bad. I do agree with you that GDK would come back on full force and the mm-hmm. botting issue. It's that I know they're doing a good job, but I was getting a boost on my Warlock in Sod. I was in BRD yeah. and yeah. they made us sit, sit in the corner, right? So we get the XP. And I took a step back because the Hunter and the Hunter fell out of the goddamn roof. And then he resets it. I was like, Maybe I didn't see that correctly because I was, I was recording as well for a video. And then we walk back in, we go in the corner, but I take a couple steps back. The hunter starts flying into the fucking roof of BRD and pulling the instance. And I was like, oh my God, you're fly hacking? What the hell? <laughs> um, and I paid 150 gold for five, like for five boosts because, you know, like I, I want you to level like 25 characters at some point. Just, you just don't have the energy to level a new one. No, I, of course. I was just getting a boost and I'm just sitting here like, I reported him, but I finished my boost. Yes. <laughs> I mean, hey, bro, you got listen. You took advantage of the situation, but still pack his ass up. Yeah. I respect it. And it's like, so botting, it's, it's still prevalent in Season of Discoveries. It's definitely going to be oh, even more prevalent yeah. in Classic and, and Fresh. So there's, there's a lot of issues with Fresh. I'm sure it'd be fun so long as it was shortened out so they work on Classic Plus. Um, yeah. But then talking about, like you said, if they make changes to Classic Fresh, it's not Fresh anymore. How not many fresh. changes do you think they would do? For example, the Nixia necklace being like account bound, so you can send it to your alts, might have Stormwind. Mm. Like, oh, what changes do you think they would add to Classic Fresh that the player base would be okay with and they wouldn't make it fuss about? Because the guild UI for Classic Fresh might piss people off, but might have Stormwind, 
all the era players want Mighty Stormwind. So, I think Mighty Stormwind might not be a bad idea, and just simply have account bound attunements. Mm -hmm. Um, I think account bound attunements, um, Mighty Stormwind definitely I could see that. Um, I don't think like adding any things that you know like made changes to classes in such a way from like a rune design perspective, mm -hmm. you know, uh, should be within fresh whatsoever. Uh, to talk about like events like STV, Ashenvale, um, I don't know. I don't know if you add those things. I do know the Ashenvale event was really good for Silverwing Sentinel rep. Mm -hmm. But then again, if you add that in there, you're starting to now people are going to be like, all right, this is not classic fresh. This is sod classic fresh. Mm -hmm. This is this is not what we wanted. So I think honestly, if they're doing classic fresh, you have to remember they're paying homage to classic original wow players that just want to like it's no different from like all right if i want to go boot up runescape i just want to play runescape one mm -hmm. i don't want to play runescape two or three i want to play runescape you know right. and if, if it's a new server a new realm of runescape i know what i'm getting involved into i just want to play that maybe if you add like a quality of life change from like our you know osrs and with, with um and everything from runescape three if there was something good in runescape three and you added that to original runescape then I don't mind like a small little QOL update. But as far as like, you know, if I'm playing something that's original, keep it original. Don't change right. it. That's there's a player base there for a reason. There's reason why people get hyped about it and they tune on on Twitch to watch people um, or whatever streaming platform. So I think at the end of the day, I, I don't I, I wouldn't say I don't mind account wide attunements. And yeah, might have storm. And I think those would be probably the two things. I can't really think of a third one that I'm like, wow, like that would be amazing for you know the guild ui it's like whatever I, I think just leave the original ui for classic fresh just leave it um the other two ideas i, I think those are small little things that don't make a massive ordeal right um uh, because at the end of the day you go into a raid you die you lose your buffs they're your buffs are packed yeah, true you know it is what it is and, and then maybe if you, you can look at professions if anything um that's a good discussion of like you know whether you know i know for a, a big deal for a lot of people is like consumables you know for raids and how like alchemist right now you know you're getting that proc chance of like you know three or four uh big flask of like you know spell power mm -hmm. or distilled wisdom flask and they're giving you a lot of lot of money but i think if they add that to classic fresh then if you don't roll alchemy as your profession you're going to be losing out on a lot of gold making you That's know a... so that could be an over advantage of a profession in comparison to a lot of other professions that might be an issue as well so i think maybe just those two things is the only thing personally i can think of yeah, no, that that's a very valid point. Like the Anixia necklace, because I know a lot of people are gonna have to do it on their alt or whatnot. So that being a count bound. No, I don't think I don't think many people would complain. Same thing with Might of Stormwind and like Chrono Boon. Like at this point, Chrono Boon was not in vanilla. It wasn't even in classic Fresh 19, but you can't play classic era without Chrono Boon. It's cancer. Um yeah. so Chrono Boon, like small things, like you said, like taking a few things from a different version of the game and adding those as QOL like updates can be beneficial. But I also agree that if they deviate even slightly too far, like you said, with the profession updates that was with Psalm, for example, a few of the things they added was too far from fresh and just it didn't feel good and people didn't enjoy it. So um Yeah, I agree. I think it's and you can't you can't you have to understand that you can't do anything that's against your original player mm -hmm. base because it's like those are the players that want to play this more hardcore version of WoW. Right. This more, you know, very gritty, down to earth. Like I'm doing this at a slow pace. I won't hit level ten this week. Maybe another day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm not gonna get into my first dead mines or get into, you know, whatever into like so and so date. You know, I think you have to realize that this player base wants to have, you know, things stay to its core of its value, and that's the game they loved. And you know, that's what you know it means a lot to them is the original classic. You know, absolutely. So we're gonna move on to the next point. Um. And those were really good points you had, by the way. Thank New game modes, because for retail, for example, we just had Plunderstorm, uh, Mop Remix, now we're in the war within, and they've already said new game modes are coming, new remixes are coming. But we're not going to talk about retail's new game modes, we're going to talk about Classic's new game modes. We know Classic Plus, but do you think we will get TBC Fresh, or do you think that's not happening? Do you think all the effort isn't going into Classic Plus, or do you think we'll get a TBC Sod? Like in terms of game modes for mm. classic, because we know classic fresh is coming and we know classic plus is coming. Those two things were soft confirmations, but they never gave us any timelines, any deadlines of when things could be. Classic plus could be three years out of, for what we know. So do you think yeah. after SOD ends, 
after Nax, maybe we'll get Karazhan and whatnot. Then after that, do you think we go into TBC? What do you think happens there? I mean, this is a good question because, I mean, honestly, uh, as you're aware of as well, and a lot of people are aware of now, that they've admitted that they're not too sure where they want to go after Sod ends. Uh, they're kind of on the border of, like, possibly transitioning this realm to a classic era realm, but then maybe it's like a classic era slash Sod realm, where now if you're on this realm, it's just, you know, Sod era now. So now we have, like, a lot of eras of different things mm -hmm. going on. Um, and I'm sure they have the power to do so, but... I do think out of the three, like, or just TBC and talks in general, I have been seeing a lot of people, um, especially with, like, you know, my, my last couple of videos, and even mentioned this in the comments, saying that TB Sod would be interesting. Uh, it'd be very interesting, uh, especially how TBC felt over there. But I do think um, if they were to do a TBC Sod, I would like to see either the characters from where we're at right now they you can have a copy of that character on you know regular sod if you want to keep it there or a copy of that character goes to sod tbc version or possibly another alternative is you make a fresh character on tbc sod and it's a whole new experience um and there's many different rune adjustments um now whether this is this tbc zod variant is based on you know the 2020 2021 area around where tbc came out or this is based on older TBC. You know what I mean? It depends on how they're, you know, putting it into, I guess, what this particular version of the Burning Crusade. But I think it would be, I, I, honestly, I'm a, I'm a little biased. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I love the Burning Crusade, personally. I think TBC is probably one of the greatest expansions of World of Warcraft ever. I like it more than Wrath. Uh, I like, if, if I were to choose, it would be Vanilla and, or Vanilla or Classic, whatever, and, and, and TBC to be honest. Um, so I, I wouldn't mind trying a TBC side. And I also think once again, for a lot of people, it would be very, you know, fun to take this journey on again, you know, to, you know, get the hype back up and, you know, see people playing it and getting involved. And, you know, I think it, it would, be, I honestly think any version, uh, you know, when it comes to world of Warcraft, um, even though some versions are not as good as, as others are good for, you know, the community because that people want, just want to play. Wow. So I could see a TBC sod honestly happening over anything, but uh, now is it sometime soon? I don't know, but I could see it happening for sure. That That's kind of how I feel. Cause for me, TBC is my favorite version of wow. I actually like it more than vanilla, but like, I like the idea of classic plus more than going into TBC. But if, if we're not getting classic plus, I would love another TBC fresh to experience that again, because that's, my beginnings in classic well in world of warcraft yeah. it's just it's a it's a game mode that's dear to me so being able to go back to tbc would be hype and i do feel like a lot of people the first time around when 2019 came around people want to skip through tbc and go straight to wrath people didn't enjoy tbc for what it was it was kind of like a wrath waiting room almost yeah and got now i feel like people will realize that i should have enjoy tbc more instead of wishing for it to be done and they want to go back there and actually experience it properly so I think TBC would, even more than Classic Fresh, I think TBC being the next version after Sod would do the best numbers-wise for the Classic player base. Just in terms of bringing people back sub numbers while they work on Classic Plus. Like you said, are they working on it? Will they make it? I don't know, but I've seen all the YouTube videos, all the comments and so many things, all the Reddit threads. People are clamoring for TBC again. And I'm not sure how hard it is, how much effort or like energy or dev power it takes, but TBC might be the smartest decision. So instead of pissing yeah. everybody off with like, oh, it's classic fresh again, only the loud minority wants it. And I don't know, I don't know if that's true. I, I want to clarify that to anybody watching. But I feel like TBC would have the least amount of complaints from all the player base. I feel like mm -hmm. it would be the most, this satisfies everybody and sure, it's not everyone's exact what they want, but this is something that not many people would complain about in comparison to some of the other particular game modes. Yeah, I, I agree. 
I, I think honestly, TBC for a lot of people, especially during the COVID era of gaming, was exactly like you said, like almost like a waiting room for RAF, but also people really did enjoy TBC. Uh, they had fun. Numbers were still up during that time, especially, you know, going from, go, coming from, you know, 2019 Classic Era going into TBC. I remember having a blast uh, enjoying it and and streams were popping. People were enjoying it. The entertainment value was like really at an all time high for a lot of games in the industry. And uh, honestly, I think a lot of people have just an amazing experience with the Burning Crusade overall. And especially, you know, um, with the there's a lot of good you know raids and a lot of good dungeons and so much good reputational grind the pvp system in there for me and tbc was like one of my favorite eras of pvp because i i personally i'm i guess you know i know some people don't like the resilience rating i get that and it's not for everybody but i do think for me resilience was something that i did enjoy in pvp because i think it it was an interesting way of you know um having you know reduction values against you know everybody just trying to nuke each other to the ground um you know like it is in sod obviously um but i will say i think it's an experience that people want to you know enjoy play through something that's official from you know a, an actual you know dedicated server and if they did a sod variant of it i think it would be very interesting you know going to different areas in the world whether it's like you know area 52 or in the grand you know and finding newer runes so to say or a new system if they continue the sod concept and also what something what are new ideas would they add to TBC? You know, would it be new BGs? Would it be new PVP events, open world PVP events? Um, you know, new class quest, you know, uh, designs or, you know, different alternatives for people to do. And uh, I don't know, you know, I think honestly the, the future is open for them. Their playground is so massive right now. They have tons of options, honestly. So I, I think for them, if they wanted to do it, it's on the table, but I don't know if they're really, they have their foot on the pedal with with the decision of tbc yet i still think they're working on things and they're just not 100 percent certain where sod will go until it does get to that point where they're like all right we have to make this decision it has to be either a community vote or something that we just decide as an internal dev team and then go from there what's oh. best for world of warcraft yeah no, i i agree with that like this like you said they have so many directions to go so many options um mm -hmm. it might even be overwhelming for the devs to be like oh shit if we make the wrong decision we piss off everybody so they're probably still yeah. like trying to figure out the the singular best decision that like makes the most amount of players happy because at the end of the day they are going to make people unhappy it's just, it's just the classic player base there's always going to be someone gonna that's un unhappy so um yeah which which does bring the question um this is going back a second but how long do you think we have left with sod before it's finally over do you think we have like are they going to accelerate blackwing left like they said, at least three months minimum for each raid, right? So that's 12 yeah. months. So from here to essentially August, September next year. Is, mm. Well, no, because we've been at MC for about almost, a, how long has it been exactly? Six weeks, eight weeks? Yeah, almost two months. So we have essentially 10 more months. So Ju July next year is when SOD should hypothetically end with three months for each new phase. Do you think there is going to be a Karazhan Crips added, or do you think in June next year? Do you think June is like Sod's over? There's a four month, five month waiting period, and then the next game is announced. Like, what is your opinions on that time frame for Sod? I, I think it. I think it definitely ends within. I would have to say, if I'm looking, like just like from a calendar mm -hmm. point of view, right now, I could definitely see it ending by like next June you know, before the summer comes out, you know? Um, and then this way they can, you know, have the potential to do something with a BlizzCon and then announce a, like a bombshell announcement, you know? They would give them a good sweet time frame to say, guess what, guys? You know, we got a massive announcement for you and we've been cooking this up for a long time, keeping it under wraps. You've seen hints from it from several interviews. They would probably even showcase, you know, you know, hammers in your interview for sure. <laughs> you know, just to throw in, throw in the concept. But, yeah. but I'm just saying, you know, they, they would showcase a lot of things, but I think it would be an awesome, you know, thing to do. And um, honestly, it's it sucks because like I don't want to, you know, I, I think any player right now, like they, they know they don't want it to end. Because, like, obviously, you know, we're enjoying this, you know, journey. Um, and some people, they've left and they have, they're going to retail. It's fine, you know. And it's always here for you, you know, at the end mm -hmm. of the day. But I do think, um, I don't know, man. I really hope Karazhan comes out after uh, Nax. I, I really, I'm praying for, you know, new raids. I'm, I'm praying for 
You know, I like the idea of new dungeons. They did it with Demon Fall Canyon. I thought that was actually Demon Fall Canyon. I the more I, I played it, I enjoy it. I still actually kind of want to go through it because I got to get the Accursed Chalice, an item uh, that like boosts your strength by a lot. Uh, I have to have to get some items, like just like little items I've never gotten before in there. And I just want to go in there and get some stuff. So I enjoy that actual dungeon from, you know, just playing a, a, something that has mechanics. You know, it's actually pretty fun. Um, but overall, I, I say, you know what, let's let's not only add the new raids. You know, if we do Karazhan, if we tease the Scarlet Monastery raid, when would we add that? Would it be before Nax? Would it be during aq as well as you know with aq 10 or sorry aq 20 aq mm -hmm. or aq 10 would be crazy but aq 20 aq 40 and uh you know a scholar monastery um but who knows you know i don't know what their ideal goal is but i do hope that we as a player base get to somewhat experience what they have cooking in the kitchen for sure as far as you know karazan crips as far as you know a, a karazan slash karazan crips combo you know, whether it's both of them, you know, and it's like, holy, you know, we're going to do Karazhan regular one day. We're going to do Karazhan Crips the next day. You know what I mean? Who knows how they're going to, you know, approach that. But I do think that the end is coming for sure around June, July, I would say. I'm just going to throw that out there as a as a as a, a shot in the dark, mm -hmm. you know, no, that that's valid. I, I've been thinking as well, because in, the devs have even said it. I remember if it was in my interview or Hammer's. Or it might have been what uh, blue posts. It's been a minute since I remember where they said it from, but there's going to be new content coming in between the phases as well. And I'm not sure what new content is like. Like you said, would that be the Scarlet Raid? Would that be, for example, we're now going back to Cathedral because they're now adding a Cathedral Mega Raid because they have access to that old Cathedral where the entrance is just yeah. one big dungeon. That's those files are in game. It's fully finished. They just have to add some doodads or whatnot. Is that going to happen in between? Like, is it going to be Black and Wear ZG into the Scarlet Raid, into AQ2040, into Nax Karazhan? And if that is the case, will it quit be pushed all the way till essentially November, December? And then while SOD is ending, we get Classic Pluses announcement at BlizzCon, like you said. So I, I do wonder exactly like what they're planning on doing, because if they don't add any new content in between, even if they yeah. do add Karazhan, Start essentially still ends in June, July next year because that's just two or three months of Karazhan before it's essentially the closing time. So exactly. sure, it's, it still might end in October, but essentially the end begins in June or July because Karazhan's out. This is it. BlizzCon's the next announcement. So I feel like no matter what, start is over before well by November next year. I yeah, I, I agree. I I agree with that, and I think honestly, like you know, with them giving a heads up to like give you a you know news post, blue post, like hey guys, you know, uh, these next three months is like the final touches. We have something big planned for you guys to enjoy for these three months. Uh, and just because SOD is over, it doesn't mean that it's not you're not going to be able to still continue enjoying this when this server gets transferred into a SOD era. You know, you can mm -hmm. still enjoy it there, but the official like you know SOD development is done. But you will enjoy this final big huge announcement that we have for you that we've been planning for a long time and whether it's you know some other form of an unused asset that we've never seen before or they had, didn't even discuss possibly even something with the caverns of time maybe you know mm -hmm. who knows if they do something in that area where it's cool. like that'd be cool a, a completely different um but i i am very excited to see what exactly is the uh I guess the plan, you know, the playbook for, for it, for sure. I don't think also the answer is to just to, cause I know this is going to happen and I'm going to mm -hmm. say it now and people <laughs> are going to be like, no, you're wrong. And that's when they get shot. So it's no big <laughs> deal in Minecraft for sure. But the thing is, is that, um, they're just probably going to add another raid boss or two mm -hmm. within BWL and ZG. And if you look at the track record, that's kind of what they've been doing, you know? Like, or like, you know, especially with MC, you know, MC, we just added the 11th boss, you know, and here's the meatball. No big deal, right? No, no mm -hmm. worries of that. But if they're going to continue that track record, they're going to do that in BWL. They're going to probably after, you know, you, you know, you killed the last boss in BWL or, or after you killed, you know, Hakar and GG, right? Um, they're going to add another boss or something or something to throw you off, you know, and there might be small little internal element changes, maybe raid wise within, you know, maybe difficulties or how they decide to do it with like resistance caps or et cetera, mm -hmm. like they did with MC3 and MC2 and MC1, like the heat level variants with MZG and BWL. But the question is, is that enough? Mm -hmm. Is that only 
the thing that players wanted to see. And is that so much more different from like fresh rather you just tune things with inside, but there's nothing else explorative on the outside that we actually wanted to see like another version of like another demon fall Canyon replica, mm -hmm. you know, like of like another area that has, you know, a dungeon that we can go through, mm -hmm. you know, I, and we've talked about this, you know, I've talked about hearth Glen and the plague lands tears hand, you know, the troll area to the top, uh, mm -hmm. top right as well. Um, or, you know, Heck, even where you get the uh, what is it? The what uh, the the Gazra's hammer or for Gazra? Uh, yeah, like hinterlands. The, uh, the, the uh, hinterlands. I get the city's it, name. Um, I don't. Yeah. About yeah. Yeah, we're all the elites there, but what if we turn that into a dungeon? It's a massive area, you Gintelo, know, and. Are. Yeah, gentle. Yes, exactly. And what if we turn that into an instance where now this is not, you know, those elites are hard to kill in the first place when you were going there. I remember even with the the with going into this current phase, I was with my friends and we were like, yo, we got to get that hammer. You know what I mean? Like, let's go in there. And those elites hit hard, you know, and what if we turn that into something, you know, yeah. um, it's just it's just a figure of speech. But I'm all I'm getting at is that this is the type of stuff that you revisit and get people going back into the zones that are no longer populated with like, let's say, a lot of people anymore. And you get people going there. And now the world in these zones feel alive and Azeroth is breathing, you know, and 100%. that's what I'm that's what I'm looking forward to. No, I, I completely agree with you, like adding like some fresh content in between, like, like and like I, I know you said slightly controversial, but I actually agree with you is that realistically new content in between now and next and hopefully cars and it's probably just going to be i know you guys didn't like the spicy meatball from molten core so we added the black wing lair as the 11th boss of black wing lair and it's just a big door <laughs> yeah. or whatever like oh you know i mean it, it'll be a joke garage. we've added the <laughs> <aunt garage. laughs> it's like all right guys unbelievable um but i do agree that it's like while they might keep that joke tradition the, the Blackwing Lair, the Ankaraj, the, the Nax Ramus, like whatever they do, they probably should add like a new dungeon. For example, Demonfall Canyon, Jinta Law. So the Siege of Jinta Law, where you have to climb your way up to the top, defeat like one boss on each layer, trash yeah, packs, and like go all the way, like block off some X section so you're not just exploring. So you have to go here, 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 like zigzag to the top and the back. Yeah. Um, or for example, in, in Eastern Plagueland, like you said, they could make a Hearth Glen a dungeon. Um, they could add a Nerubian world boss in Eastern Plague. They could, they could do a few little things here or there to like be like, here's that fresh content, enjoy. There's going to be more in Classic Plus, but for the sake of Sod, at least it's a little bit more than just the actual raids. Or maybe like a Teleporter yeah. and on an AQ, because everybody hates AQ, so that's just like the, the Water Lords and MC. You can now teleport from each to each boss's death location in AQ. So small things is probably the best we're really going to get but i do hope i do agree with you that adding these new open world dungeons again now that they have that art team support maybe they'll be able to create some fresh bosses something they can already just seal off a location and be like boom dungeon yeah especially with zg exactly. coming up imagine they made a quest tying zg to jinta law like yeah. that perfect timing like there's so many little things they could do Exactly. And I really hope to see more of like the void lore stuff again, you know, what goes on, especially within, you know, the, the future phase coming out with like, you know, um, phase five. Um, I'm really curious to see even like you mentioned, like the Nerubians and stuff like what if they like they just did something like with the world boss and it was like almost like a tie to like, you know, we as a classic sod community are, are versing this this you know world boss that we're not familiar with but over there in the on the retail end and more within they are very well familiar with that you know yeah. there's obviously the invasion of it going on with Zalataf, you know yeah. but we're only dealing with one major entity over here on our end and we defeat this entity on you know a weekly basis whether it's one world boss or two and just like you know Azragos and lord kazak they drop a loophole you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's actually you know an actual fun fight and enjoyable um, and people get to do that, you know, so it's just examples, but I think, you know, nice little touches here and there would help improve phase five, because the one biggest question for me, especially with like the one of the videos that I did is I'm very, very clueless <laughs> on what is going to happen with phase five. I'm almost like to the point where I'm lost, where like, I know the two things are going to happen. You're still going to do your MC as well, because people did Molten Core when VWL was mm -hmm. out in ZG. So that's three things to do. What are the other original things which are a big question mark right now that's the unknown which i don't know what's happening yeah no i've 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 been doing a whole bunch of theory because my channel went from being a sod channel to like i put my tinfoil hat on and all my, <laughs> my it's just like did you know Jaina was actually meant to be the banshee queen because i discovered that recently like so there's a whole bunch of mm. conspiracy shit from like the og files and like all the alpha beta like all that stuff so yeah with 
with phase five, I I have been thinking, and I I do think that what they're likely going to do is add a new dungeon or two, and realistically, they're probably just going to add an extra boss to Blackwing Lair, maybe an extra boss to ZG, and then probably a world boss or two because. If they are working on a Scarlet Raid, it probably makes the most sense to do it between Blackwing Lair and AQ, or maybe after AQ and before Nax, because AQ is kind of not the fondest memory for people. The opening of the gates is, but yeah. Blackwing Lair is a, a pretty beloved raid. I, like most people, it's their favorite classic raid. For some people, it's, it's Nax, but for most people, it's Blackwing Lair. So I, I do think we're going to get something new. I just can't put my head on what because I never predicted Demonfall Canyon. I, I assumed they were going to get new dungeons, but I assumed it was going to be finishing off things that already exist. Instead, they made a yeah. completely brand new original idea for themselves. So, yeah. will they do the same thing? Would they take off another part of like that Blackrock Mountain area, maybe like a dungeon called the Siege of Blackrock, where you have to yeah. clear your way up the path from Burning Steps or whatever? and Searing Gorge, mm -hmm. and Siege the Mountain, then you get to go attack uh, Naltharian, right? Like, there's so yeah. many little things they could do that I actually can't predict it, because the dev team is crafty. They've got some creative flair, now that they've actually got oh, some art support, too, so... I actually like that. Like, um, two things I'll, I'll comment on is the one, like you say, you know, the, si the Siege of Blackwing Lair, you know, if, if possibly, like, maybe even that's, like, its own... I, I remember I was even talking about this over there with uh, the guys at uh, Warcraft Reloaded, and we were talking about like you know what if that was like a PVP like in like not an instance but like an event mm -hmm. where like now like I know they kind of are not having any plans for future PVP events but obviously a PVP community is a major part of classic WoW you know it's it's a it's a part that a lot of people love and enjoy and they watch people play uh, PVP all the time and um, I think honestly what if that was like an event where like you know maybe that went to a new type of BWL reputation. You know, and there's new items to tie to that vendor, uh, something of that nature. Eventually, in the future of Classic Plus, uh, who knows? Maybe if they're already working on that in Sod, you know, I have no idea. But I could definitely see that. And also, I think the second comment is that, um, you know, Demon Fall Canyon was a win. It was a W. Honestly, it, it really, it really was. And if that is a possibility, that now opens up all the doors of possibilities of other dungeons within all the zones of cross of you know the eastern kingdoms and Kalmador. you know so i think uh, it, it opens up a lot of opportunity for them to say hey you remember like this area that looked like it was an area that you visited and it was like too big to be like a quest zone or whatever um this is now a dungeon area this now has you know things added to there so I i'm really looking forward to see what they're possibly going to add uh in the future when that time does yeah. come like talking about that, actually, I want to add one final point. They could even tease Hyjal in Classic Plus with a dungeon yep. in Sod, the winter spring area with all the demons. They could essentially mm -hmm. make us do a dungeon that clears all the way up to the gates of Hyjal, being like, the key is still missing. Yeah. But we found the fragment, so maybe someday it'll open. Winky mm -hmm. face or whatever. This is like yeah, a and teaser. Like a, um, exactly. So and, like, and like a lore text. Yeah. Exactly. So like, there's so many little things they could do to just tease that classic plus whilst delivering not as expensive as time consuming content in in sod um but i, I will move on to the next point because we have three things we have left to cover mm -hmm. okay but before i do that a word from our sponsor ray Chad i'm joking i don't have sponsors um <laughs> uh, so i wanted to talk about something that happened on twitter recently with the wow dev team teasing a six second uh, animated cinematic which had everybody literally losing their mind about a warcraft anime and everyone was like holy shit after cyberpunk and arcane are we finally yeah. getting warcraft media that we can enjoy and consume and we got a five minute animated trailer for well animated in-game cinematic for the war within which was yes. which, which was cool don't get me wrong it was really like impressive that this was um this was this really high quality five minute anime production. But, like, I was personally disappointed because I was like, holy shit, we're getting a. It was because it was showing like this, this, um, the second war from Warcraft 2, the siege of Quell Talas with Orgrim Doomhammer and all that stuff. And it looked amazing and sick. And so we didn't get that. But, like, what are your thoughts on, for example, a Warcraft anime now that Microsoft owns uh, Blizzard? Like, do you think that? Xbox would green light that, be like, 
Well, we have all this media, all this this ginormous fan base. There's 140 million World of Warcraft accounts. Even if 60 million of them are dual accounts, because some people have two or three accounts, that's at least 80, 75, 80 million like, actual people that have played World of Warcraft that would be interested in a TV show, an animated one, just like mm. Arcane and Cyberpunk. What are your thoughts on that? I think, um, honestly, you know, when it comes to, you know, people consuming entertainment and stuff, you know, we have so many really good shows out right now that people enjoying such as like you know arcane you know ex uh, especially arcane and uh you know seeing cyberpunk you know at edge runners and the massive uh, success that it brought back to cyberpunk when mm -hmm. you know that game was in a, a pretty bad state in the beginning and then it finally got fledged out and it, it became a very beloved game not only because of the animated series but the developers really took time to fix that game out um but then also the animated series came out and it brought a lot of life back into it and then they added stuff from the series into the game itself yeah. so um i gotta give credit where credit is due because i actually played all through cyberpunk and it was really fun mm -hmm. um but as far as like you know world of warcraft the the amount of potential is limitless like you can literally crank something out even on netflix even if it wasn't good people are gonna consume it anyways right. like people want to see something that is you know warcraft inspired um maybe you know talking about the old lore of the original warcraft and then bringing that to light with like one season's dedicated to this race and dedicated to the next race and then all these seasons collide and then they all come together during like a final season or whatever you know and you know going into the many stories that are yet to be untold i think it honestly it would be a massive l for them to not do anything animated uh on a certain streaming platform, more than likely Netflix, more than anything, because that's one of probably the biggest streaming platform for media and entertainment mm -hmm. for a lot of people. And I think honestly, it would be a massive W for them uh, to actually, you know, put their foot on the pedal and look at Riot Games right now. They are doing that with their world building and they have a massive world to, you know, over like 10 plus, what, 10 plus years or more of character development different areas you know different champions that are, have arised from like you know the, the stories over there mm -hmm. and many different you know people to you know go based off of the story wit so i think honestly if they were not to do like a show i would be completely like you know not bummed out but i'd be like man that sucks you know it, it, it really would like you know be like damn like th what could have been what we could have like seen from uh, everything that they could have potentially talked about. And honestly, it, it's just something that I really hope that they consider doing. Because not only will it bring, you know, people who are not used to playing World of Warcraft and be like, wait, this, this story is pretty cool. Like the lore about this is actually fascinating and I'm enjoying this and I'm watching this. I've never played WoW a day in my life. It'd probably make a hell of a ton of money, you know, For coming sure. into a whole new player base. I mean, and, and this is examples, you know, like, um, you know, I was talking about with like some of my friends too. Like I see like, you know, a lot of these other big streamers that are, you know, playing games they've never played before, uh, uh, experimenting with things they've never seen before. And then they finally get involved in the community. And then, you know, it gives that, you know, a whole new player base of players who never played role-playing games or MMOs. And now they're playing MMOs and they can attract a whole new market. And it's a very big money decision for them to do this. And if they don't, then they're just missing out on capital, to be honest thousand percent i'm right there with you like i've been i've been because i've been playing world of warcraft since well not world of warcraft the warcraft universe since 2001 or 2000 since i was like a literal toddler essentially yeah. and i started with warcraft 2 and then warcraft 3 and then wow and warcraft has been like such an iconic part of my life like i remember crying when i was like nine or ten when i saw illidan die in Black Temple. Yeah. I was like, no, not Illidan. I, I love you, Illidan. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's some, can I have that shield though? My Illidan. Um, I, I feel you. <laughs> so it's, it's like, a badass weapon. The, the Bulwark was cool. That's one of my favorite oh, yeah. items ever. Um, hmm. But like, you have these like little things in just about the, just lore and the character that it's like, just the, the Wrath of the Lich, like the culling, like this Warcraft 3 campaign, the human campaign where you see Arthas is like, like Arthur's being here and falling down to here, coming back yeah. to here, and then picking up Frostmourne, knowing he's gonna sell his soul just so he can kill Malganus in his rage. Like, don't pick it up, Arthur's. Because Bran, I can't do a good dwarven accent, being like, don't pick it up, <laughs> it's over for you. And he's like, I don't care. Vengeance will be mm. mine. 
And then he goes and kills Malganus, and Malganus is like, well, hold up, we're on the same side here. Arthur, uh, hold up. And like, you know, he just gets <laughs> absorbed into the sword because Arthas doesn't care. Like, and like, so many yeah. of those story elements, which is like, can you imagine the culling of Stratholm animated on TV? My God, man. But like, it just it would be fascinating. Like, again, like, I hope Microsoft, especially like Phil Spencer, because I know he likes writing checks for random projects. Like, mm hmm. Greenlight the anime. Get make a deal with Amazon, right. Netflix. Just do something. There's so much you could do. We've seen Cyberpunk success. We've seen Arcane success. It's insane. And Warcraft is drastically bigger than Riot. And um, oh. well, actually, League of Legends is. I don't think anymore. I think five, ten years ago, yes, it would have been bigger than League of Legends. But I don't think anymore that it's even close to League of Legends fame. But mm, yeah, like Warcraft is huge. Like, if Arcane won this many awards, has so many hundreds of millions of viewers across the world, Warcraft would as well. Um, but it is what it is. We just have to hope and pray as players that Microsoft and Xbox gives us some, some things to actually enjoy. Yeah, for real. Phil, work on that quickly, sir. Please, <laughs> we need that for sure. Yeah. Phil, Please. Unlock your DM so I can DM you on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Please, <have> brother. <laughs> Please, brother. Send, send the script. Send the ideas. We need that anime yeah. now, man. Uh, Please. Uh, dude. But so then we're going, we are going to move on to the next topic. As cool as anime would be, that's kind of a pipe dream. But it might not because they did start the five minute cinematic. But the next thing, the war within. And as a classic player, we're, we're classic Andes and we're trying retail yeah. for essentially the first time in years. What are your thoughts on it? How, how are you liking it? Because a lot of people have said that the war within is, it's essentially like, it's like sod was like a bridge for classic players to try sod because it was so much easier for sod players to like get into the war within and be like, this is actually really fun. Like, what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on the war within? I mean, honestly, man, as a as a classic player who's lo who loves classic at its core and has enjoyed, you know, the the original ride through you know vanilla and classic and especially you know playing you know tbc into wrath and then stopping there because that was really the three expansions that i got to enjoy and had a re really good time with um i played very bits and pieces of shadowlands but i did not enjoy doing tour gas and doing stuff with the jailer events i think it was absolutely miserable i do wish i did castle nathria though um that looked pretty badass i won't lie um but i did hear dragonflight was a good thing and then war within came out and i gave it a shot and to be honest, I've been playing it for, you know, since the early release of the past day or so, uh, but I've been up for too long. So forgive me for my knowledge, but I will say that um, as a classic player, I got to admit, I'm having a good time. I, I actually can't believe it. I'm not going to lie that I actually enjoy retail. Um, it is a much different experience and it is very, in my opinion, as a classic player, it's very easy to get into. It's not as hard as people uh, make it sound out to be if they never tried retail or maybe are intimidated by it. It's very, very easy to get into. It's very straightforward. Um, and I like the world. The, the world design is very, very pretty. Like the, the Isle of Dorne, it, it is beautiful. Like I yeah, actually sure. enjoy it and I can see some like, you know, fun, you know, turn on the PVP war mode and have some, you know, pretty fun open world experiences of PVP over there. Um, and that's something I've yet to try too. But as a classic player, you know, getting involved in, you know, you know, with the dragon riding and, you know, getting used to the new profession system and the specializations and the talent mode of characters where it's like, wow, like it is like literally a, a night and day difference in comparison to what, vanilla is retail is a whole nother animal but i will say that animal is understandable you know what i mean it's easy to control you know and uh as funny as it sounds but it it really isn't all that bad as you know people make retail to sound out to be so i really think honestly the war within for me right now it is refreshing the questing is really fun the delves it's like these solo delves you could do with people or by yourself and there's like tier mode challenges that you can kind of do with it kind of like Torius in a way but mm -hmm. not so much in comparison but it, it is actually fun um, and I will say some of the dungeon design is actually really pretty uh, as well. And I, I, I enjoyed the, the story mode uh, with Zalataf. Like, I think the cutscenes are really, really pretty. You know, you start off with Dalaran getting under attack, you know, mm -hmm. by a lot of like, I believe it's like the, the, the Rubians and stuff. And right. uh, honestly, it's like, it's, it's really cool to see like, you know, a new zone going into other areas. And um, the exploration is, is kind of endless right now. So I am in that honeymoon phase. I'm not going to like sit here and deny that, you know, um, obviously there might be a point where I'm like, all right, some things are kind of a little uh, mediocre at best. I do think some of the, some of the delves are a little worse in comparison right now 
to other delves that you can do like on a list from like you know s tier to like f tier there is some delves that i'm like all right don't do those but do those you know um and there's always metas that you're gonna find out but i do think like even as a player who plays paladin right for example i've also have a warrior in there i play fury warrior in there as well now and um i will say both those classes feel very straightforward very simple um and they feel just fluid which is kind of you know crazy for me to say as a player who is so used to you know ab abusing small little things in vanilla that was not intended with like my class and you know and and now going to all the way to you know retail where like classes are just more fledged out you know they're they're completely like based on you know a certain design whether that's haste or mastery or crit so i i do think honestly for a new player Getting involved with it is not that hard as it seems, and do not be intimidated or listen to somebody telling you not to try it out. It's not worth you know, uh, it's not worth you like you know, losing your mind over it. Just give it a shot if you want to. It's completely optional, up to you. And watch other people's play and get a fair point of view on how you feel it, it might you know suit your play style or if you want to do it or not. I'm I'm literally right there with you. Like I I essentially quit during BFA. But I, I come back for every single well, expansion's launch. I think the only expansion I haven't touched ever was Moth and Vanilla, whatever it was, because I, I didn't have it. But with I quit in Dragon, I quit in BFA, then I quit in Shadowlands within like a month or two because I was like, this just feels shitty. I don't like the story, yeah. the world. It was beautiful, but I didn't like it. It felt off to me. And then in Dragonflight, I tried Dragonflight, but so something felt off and I couldn't get into it. And I assume the same thing was going to happen with the War Within, despite seeing all the cool, like I said, I even bought the Collector's Edition. Before even knowing if the game was good, that was a blind gambit. It paid off. It was stupid of me to pre-order. Um, mm -hmm. I went into the War Within and I was like, holy shit, I'm actually enjoying retail. I I've become the thing. I swore to destroy as a classic, Andy. And, <laughs> um, yeah. But like, like the jokes aside, it was, it's actually fun. It's enjoyable. It feels good. It feels smooth. Um, I don't think I'm going to become like a mythic raider or go super hardcore into it, but from a casual and just as a person that's trying to enjoy a game on, for example, story mode or just for the fun of it, it's actually a very rewarding and fun experience. It's yeah. not going to overtake being classic as my main game, but I see myself playing throughout the war within. I might skip a season or two, but like I'll probably play for most of the war within's life cycle because like you said, it's gorgeous. The music score is it's phenomenal. Very good. Music score is um, good. The story is actually the voice acting, and I don't know if it's because the Earthen are meant to have voice acting like that. Grates my ears a little bit. Some of the Earthen characters' voice acting, I'm like, mm -hmm. is this AI? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the story is actually I'm a bit good. Like that, so yeah. But the yeah, story is actually good. The story is actually enjoyable, at least compared to the last three expansions. Um, so I'm just sitting here like. Chris Metzen really does have a major goddamn effect. <laughs> no, he does. Honestly, like with some of those cinematics, when I was like, mm -hmm. it's like I, for the most part, when I was playing it the, the other night, you know, getting on, which I was very impressed too. Uh, not that much server lag, to be honest. I was like, wow, oh, like yeah, there no. was some was some random disconnects that have been happening to me here and there. And there was like a small little bug I found here too. But it was like nothing like groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. I still level two characters to 80. So that goes to show you the game's working, right? Mm -hmm. So I've played the game. Um, and the thing is, is that the cinematics were like, I was just really impressed with like, you know, um, especially when you go to like the hollowed ground area. Mm -hmm. My God, as like a person who like, you know, enjoys playing my class. For me, that was just like, you know, uh nothing but like glory because like i really enjoyed like you know like the ongoing battle of like you know there was like a part in the game where you have to like light these lamps for hope you know and like bring the light into the darkness and like you see like anduin at one point he looks up and he's asking you know for the light to grace him again you know and he's still in fear of like the dark and like you know that that is like uh, like he's like um basically weary of so to say mm -hmm. and like in, in the cutscenes, it's it's there's just a lot of like cool little moments that happen where i'm like man yeah, Metzen's touch on this is definitely very, very noticeable. And you could especially tell when you're going into different zones and different areas, the way the music cues change into like different, like, you know, from town to town or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or zone to zone. It's very, uh, it's very, it's very like very small, but very noticeable. And I like the little details like that. And just in general, like everything of like, you know, exploring the world of like, you know, whether you're doing your professions or even just attack, trying to get rares or go for mm -hmm. different mounts. Um, Man, I gotta say they did a damn good job. I'm actually shocked. Like sure. as a as a classic player, I think one thing me and you can especially agree on is that we are shocked that Warfin is actually is good 
Mm-hmm. And it, it's fun. It's playable. It's very easy to get into. It's not super hard as people make it out to be, um, you know, when it comes to retail, not war within, but just retail in general. Um, and yeah, I, I very much, m- much so enjoy it. Yeah. Totally. I agree with every word you said. Um, the only thing I'll add on to what you said is that as a primarily classic player, essentially since Legion at this point, the war within is essentially like, like people like I said at the beginning, but like people have said that SOD is essentially like an introduction game mode into the War Within. And mm-hmm. the War Within actually feels like SOD plus, if that makes sense to a degree. Um a much bigger, more art, like high, way more budget SOD, but like it has those classic vibes between the, the the questing, the side quests, just the world, the atmosphere. Um so Metzen for not the entire Warcraft dev team, phenomenal job, both classic yeah. and retail. Like I've said this a few times in a few of my videos, people you've said it as well. People said it. There's never been a better time to be a World of Warcraft player, especially a classic player. Well, with classic plus, that'd be a better time, but you know, that's not gonna help yeah. ourselves. <laughs> no, no, of course. But right now, if like if you want to get into, involved with WoW, mm-hmm. whether it's you know sod or you know classic, like you know with like a lot of the RP uh, RP community is doing, especially with like Deviant Delight and stuff like that um just wow in general you know retail it is a this is the moment right now where you can enjoy wow at its most like Mm -hmm. wow is really fun right now uh yes there is problems of course i think there's not one community or game has a problem you know but it's really good playing world of warcraft and being involved with like you know um you know the just the the community overall like it it, honestly i i am having a blast with wow at this current time and that's something i'm happy about absolutely right there with you so we are going to move on to the last topic and i know guys these aren't the best segues excuse me this is my very first podcast that i'm hosting i'm trying my best i'm trying my best but the last he's topic... all right <laughs> thank you thank you. i appreciate yeah. that <laughs> the last topic we have for the day is there's blizzard opened a new studio microsoft the new studio and it's helmed by kink employees but they're not working on any mobile games it's double a games with a max budget of 50 million now, they never said the max budget was 50 million, but a double A game's budget stops at 50 million by the definition. And Microsoft being a corporation, I assume when they say double A games, they mean that budget definition. So, with yeah. King, mobile game developers helming essentially Blizzard IPs as double A games, what are your thoughts on that? And why do you think they chose King employees and King leadership to lead up these studios to make double A Blizzard games? Hmm. I mean, honestly. I think they have a lot of ideas and visions for future projects that may either ignite the player base on wanting to try something new on some projects that they have working uh, possibly within the next couple of years to basically promote World of Warcraft content, but also just Blizzard gaming in general. Mm -hmm. I think they want to get more you know, fans involved within the Blizzard community, getting people either via subscriptions or obviously other packages, anything that they can get their hands with, with the marketing department to actually um, embrace new ideas with, you know, Blizzard as a whole, but also with working with other, you know, parenting companies to come out with new projects that might create a new scene for a new style of gaming for a lot of players overall. So I I understand like these back end marketing decisions, because at the end of the day, they're trying to create a new segue of a new lane to funnel new customers through. And, and that's how they look at it. From a business perspective, you look at people as customers. It's just the way it is, right? So this can be via a new IP. This could be via, you know, um, something that is, you know, groundbreaking and really good, whether it's a, a third-person style game, a first-person, et cetera. Um, I'm sure that they will have elements influenced maybe possibly from World of Warcraft, right, within these newer versions of uh, potential gaming markets that they might approach. But I think for them, this is a a new way of uh, exploring creativity with, you know, a new team, getting new ideas, and how they tackle things quarter by quarter uh, throughout the years when it comes to something new that they want to put out, whether it's a passion project or something they've been working on for a long time that they've had intention to put out to, you know, the fan base. I I actually, um, I I do agree with that. My personal thoughts on that was that they put king employees in charge because as mobile game developers they have very strict timelines there's no really room for delays because mobile people like for example candy crush swipe swipe because these yeah. suburban mums on like level fifty-seven thousand six hundred and thirty-nine, they're like how the hell are you been playing that much candy crush 
So they have to yeah. constantly crunch, make sure these new levels are harder and harder and newer and newer. So they keep swiping for more hearts and stuff. And in my yeah. opinion, they put these king employees there because whilst they might not be the most creative people, they're very strict with timelines and deadlines. And instead of releasing a bad product, they'll just cancel and try a new thing. Especially if the budget's 50 million for somebody like Microsoft, that's probably just a clerical error. Um, yeah. So putting these king employees there, be like, we're making a Warcraft RPG. Don't get off scope. Stay on scope. Stay on target. This is the budget. This is the dev team size. Finish. Every exactly. quarter, I need to see your report. See this. And like, I'm not sure what games I'll make first. Like, I, like you said, this is like a, it's a funnel to get more people to get through. Like, you like RPGs? Hey, why don't you try this game on Game Pass? And if you like it, why don't you subscribe to World of Warcraft as well? Or you exactly. like Diablo? Try this Diablo amnesia, like horror game, like Alien Isolation, where you're surviving from like one of the demons. And you yeah. like that? Hey, why don't you actually try Diablo on Game Pass? Or yeah, like, they're very you, similar. Or yeah, something you, like that. You, yeah. you like Starcraft? Or you like Helldivers? Starcraft 2 or Starcraft but Helldivers edition. Here, try it on Game Pass or whatnot. Like, I feel like you're 100% correct in that the whole tool of this new studios are get you to subscribe to a subscription service because Microsoft just doesn't even... I don't think they care about game sales as much as they care about getting people to subscribe to Game Pass more than anything else. Like even with yeah. Indiana Jones on PlayStation 5 and now, I feel like their whole goal is subscriptions, not sales. But I, I could be wrong. No, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about the value of how much uh, consumption they get mm -hmm. from, you know, an analytical perspective. Like, they have, like, data analysts that, you know, obviously observe the ratio of how things are being sold throughout the months of each quarter and they want to know what works best for each quarter and if that's either subscriptions that's sales that's in game you know maybe you know obviously in wow that's in game mounts right in game mounts sell is probably one of the most number one thing for world of warcraft making their money out of everything is oh, their in game shop and we can agree on that with the wow token as well right yeah so like but but in particular like this is an all uh, a way for them to segue new partnership possibilities to get people to inspire them to play more blizzard games play with their co-parenting company um and you know go to other avenues so like you might even see like you know and this is like smart marketing by them obviously you might even see like a mobile game with illidan in it or like yeah. a mobile game with arthas in there or with For thrall sure. or anduin you know um you know the list goes on um and honestly this is just a way for them to create a new network a new system to bring people in, get them in this community and realize that it's working. And then obviously they're going to, I mean, just like any company, if it works out for them, they're going to make a massive bang for their buck here. And it's smart marketing. It's smart. I mean, honestly, as a business person, I would do it too. It makes sense. It a hundred percent makes sense. Uh, I think any business would do it. And it, honestly, and if it's good, you know, and if it's enjoyable, um, people might actually like it, you know, whether you pump in a lot of money or not. I mean, Hey, look at a lot of the gotcha community. You know, Absolutely. look at a lot of like these animated games. They have a whole system based on the Hoyoverse, and you just download these different games, and they're and they're connected. There's promotions to others, and they it's just a way of getting people in this endless cycle. So now that's not to say that this is going to become the Hoyoverse universe where right, it's a gotcha right. mechanic, <laughs> but but if it's mobile gaming, there's obviously going to be some implements uh, and effects from it that you might be aware of. So I could very see uh, very well see that happening. Yeah, no, like I. I, I'm 100% on board with what you said. And even uh, touching on that, like, like the Hoyoverse, for example, it's so many different games that are interconnected. So it's like, you might play yeah. Genshin, but Zenless yeah. Zero might have a character that catches your eye. So you might try that. And like with Game Pass or the AA games, it might just be like, a, well, I've always wanted to play Warcraft, but an MMO is too big of a time sink or energy for me. But an RPG or an RTS game like Warcraft 4 or whatnot, that's cool. I don't want to play yeah. Diablo 4 because I don't like ARPGs, but I've always loved the Diablo universe. I like horror. This looks cool. Or Star There's no StarCraft game at all, so anything they do there would be cool. But um, Yeah, exactly. But And, and like, touching on to that, what you said about like in revenue and analysts, it was Pyro Software that said this, is that one WoW mount made more money than Wings of Liberty. And Wings of Liberty made over $100 million. So Dude. a yeah. whole StarCraft 2 expansion like, I think Wings of Liberty's budget was $100 million, And I think it mm -hmm. made... I don't know exactly. I don't think they ever revealed exactly how much it made. But I'm just going to, for the sake of conversation, let's just be a bit generous. A quarter of a billion dollars. They made 2.5 their income on Wings of Liberty. 
and one yeah. wow mount one random i forget which it was i think it might have been tyriel's charger at that time because this was a decade ago almost made yeah. more than 250 million dollars or at least at wow. a bare minimum more than 100 million at its by itself so when Insane. you see when you see numbers like that like a lot of people be like but classic has all the subs we have all the subscribers like we're keeping wow afloat that doesn't matter when one million retail players buy the new store mount and make more money than 12 months of classic subs, 5 million yep. people. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And then from a business perspective, if something is working, you're not going to, you're not going to want to fix it. If it's working for you, you know, it's a good trend. You know, it's, it's creating a lot of value for your company. Hell, the more mounts, the merrier for them. Blizzard's not going to be dumb about that. They're very smart. They have mm -hmm. really educated people on their team when it comes to the strategy of marketing and how to perfect it and get people in a loop. And they're not, you know, they're going to keep doing it until like, you know, the end of time. And, and then obviously, you know, now what, you know, working with, you know, new companies, you know, and new partnership deals mm -hmm. and new ideas. Um, this is just a bigger way for them to, you know, milk that cow, so to say, you know, to basically keep this money going. And um, honestly, you know, more power to them if that's how they're going to do it. I'm sure people will get involved with it and fall in love with new, new things. And, and honestly, who's to say who knows if something really good comes out of it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so actually that this was meant to be the last point, but like, I want to ask you a question then I'm going to ask everybody watching this to let me know in the comments down below. Do you think classic plus should have an in-game store that sells mounts, cosmetics, no power, no wow token, but in-game mounts that you can buy with real money because if retail has such a big budget, because so many people are investing into mounts. Do you think it's beneficial for the Classic Plus or the Classic dev team to have access to that same revenue pool because Classic Plus players buy a new mount every quarter? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, quick answer, no. Mm -hmm. I don't think, uh, I don't think uh, there should be a Classic Shop at all. I think it should be an achievement system where you mm -hmm. get cosmetics from achievements by putting time in the work, by, you know, or work you know what i'm getting yeah put in grinding, the work yeah. with the grind and ex you know etc um and you know being a part of azeroth where it feels like you deserve that reward within classic plus um and having the achievement system be the way how old school gaming used to be like i remember like as for example i was a halo 3 player mm -hmm. when i wanted you know do the campaign on legendary and get that hayabusa armor you know what i mean it was the work of getting it, you know, like putting the time in. Same thing with older Call of Duties, you know, when it, and when there was no like active shop, but like you got all your camos and then eventually you got your gold camo, diamond, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to put the work in and that was the cool stuff about the game. Um, the same thing should be for World of Warcraft. There shouldn't be no in-game shop in, the, mm -hmm. in Classic Plus or Classic at all. Okay. I 100% I, I agree with you from a player perspective, from somebody that just wants Classic Plus to be Classic Plus. I don't think they should add a game store, a like a game in-game shop at all. From the perspective no. of somebody that knows about business and like metrics and quarterly reports, this is a very controversial take, and I know people will disagree with me, but I feel like for Classic Plus to have the big budget, the devs, the art team, all the things that retail has, I think it needs an in-game shop just to show Microsoft and all the executives that excuse me, to all the executives that, hey guys, look, we released one mount, there's 6 million Classic Plus subs, 700,000 people bought this mount, we made $250 million off a single mount. The Classic dev team can have a bigger budget. Do I think it's good for the game? No. no. But is it good for the game? From a perspective of a company and how they assign um, like uh, um, budget for teams and whatnot, I think it is. That, that's my personal opinion. I get that it's controversial and people might hate that. But I feel like from a corporate perspective, having an in-game shop is good for Classic Plus, even if it is bad for the players and the game, if that makes sense. I can see that, yeah, from a business perspective to try to draw more people in. But I think, yeah, I, I agree to an extent because like at the end of the day, uh, we are both classic mm -hmm. players. We love the way original Classic is and we want it to stay Classic, but have that plus at the end of it. And that's... Mm -hmm. uh, the future to come so i would say yeah you know honestly i could see that happening and if it doesn't happen uh, either way i'll still be happy no, absolutely but no thank you everybody for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of the classic plus show um like i said this is a brand new show we're going to do an episode once a week so next monday will be the next episode 
um yep let me know in the comments below what you guys would like to hear about we'll have new topics and new points to talk about especially as the news keeps coming and we learn more and more in future weeks months heck maybe even a year i'm not sure how long this podcast will go but it'll go to at least the launch of classic plus so thank you all for watching my name is eben hart this is my channel my twitch everything is just eben hart tv tell her tell everybody where they can find you uh hello jay tello on youtube and twitch tv much love to you guys appreciate you guys being here and eben hart thank you keep continuing what you do buddy and i look forward to each week doing these podcasts for classic plus thank you everybody have a great time eben hart out adios all righty good stream recording there